what is leadership for you? Okay, well, with that being said, I will quote one of John Maxwell's sayings, and that is because I do abide by it. That is, people do not care how much you know until people know how much you care. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a direct quote from John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And when you apply that in real life, you'll absolutely see a shift in loyalty and in trust when mm -hmm. you apply caring for other mm -hmm. people. Because I think that for, you know, historically speaking, a lot of us have been through something in our life as it relates to work, feeling like, mm -hmm we're disposable, um, we're just a number, it doesn't matter, um, you know, and, and again, because that's been a, a conditioned type of mindset for some of us, um, applying and seeing or experiencing someone that actually cares, it just, it just definitely cultivates those types of relationships. Um, so leadership to me, um, just kind of as expressed what I did earlier, I believe that um, leadership also needs to show dedication to the vision, no matter what the vision or or the mission is. If they show the dedication to that and they're constantly working towards it and communicating, communicating with the team on lessons learned, positive outcomes, some of the unexpected outcomes that take place. I think growing and learning together absolutely shows great leadership. Then people don't feel like it's that upside down pyramid or, you know, just like they're the, they're the grunts on the ground. It's, it's again, that mindset It's the perception of that, of the receiver, right? <laughs> so being conscious as a leader, what you're putting out there. So your message and your dedication is received exactly how you expect it or want it to be. Um, so partaking in, in initiatives and activities with the team is, all, is ultimately important as well. Again, that goes back to establishing loyalty. When you have a loyal team, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> they're, they're with you for the long haul. So I think that um, with that and making, making decisions, considering you know, everyone involved and all possible outcomes, that, I think that defines what, what good leadership is for me. What do you believe will be the um, top three problems that most leaders normally face? Well, I will go off of historical information <laughs> and because <laughs> I cannot predict what will be the three top issues, but leadership trusting leadership is a definite issue. Mm -hmm. um, people, sometimes leadership feels that they have a, a higher form of leadership, even though they all have the same title and report to the same person. You know, one just has their belief that their their opinion is stronger than the other. And there's sometimes a lot of like leadership, um, I don't want to say battles, but battles that go on. Um, and one of the other things that um, I think is an issue is the willingness to adapt to change. A lot of um, leadership that's a little bit on the seniority side. Uh, when I say seniority, more of tenure, like longer term in leadership, yes. um, mm -hmm. they are not very adaptive to change. If it's not okay. broken, don't fix mm -hmm. it. Just mm -hmm. keep it the same, regardless. You know of what statistics may show. You know they're they're a little sketchy on on being willing to adapt mm -hmm. to change, and then. There's the side of if some leadership is willing, do they have the ability? Do they have the ability to adapt to the change? Because remember, again, <laughs> well, if, you know, futuristically speaking, adapting to change, not everybody is going to be open to that just because of what's going on during this pandemic. Again, these are triggers. Something's changing again. So, you know, it, 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 might, it might be a trigger. Um, and I think the third thing that um, is a is an issue is confusing age with intellect. <laughs> That's some spot of the, on. <laughs> yeah, some of those younger generations, I mean, they're really, really on it. They have advantages that we did not have and that we still don't have. And they're ahead. They are ahead. <laughs> and I just I just think that, you know. The, the leadership that has been in leadership for some time really needs to take a step back and give and give this younger generation an opportunity because I think that it will create a healthy balance.
what do you believe will be the important leadership capabilities you know knowing the three top problems that you've shared with us what will be the you know the the important leadership capabilities or skills then that they must have in the next normal to be able to continue to lead effectively well that's another loaded question <laughs> So um, and in this particular instance, you know, I would have to put that on either senior leadership or, you know, leadership themselves. They have to want to stay in leadership knowing these new challenges. Mm -hmm. And with everything that has, you know, happened unknowingly to all of us individually and the unknowing as it relates to the new norm, Mm -hmm. I would I would highly suggest and recommend that you know finding the right leadership coaching for a group of leadership mm -hmm. would be highly beneficial only because if you can find the gurus that have been collecting a majority of the data and the trends with the statistics showing you know by taking surveys and doing you know market validation by gathering you know the data to say you know this is what people are looking forward to in returning to work this is what people are looking forward to in the next you know gen leadership um you know, I think that there should be some probing done because what was going on before is not going to be effective moving forward. I strongly believe that and I'm seeing it now even as some, you know, companies um, have gradually brought people back. I mean, where I'm currently at in the United States, there's been a few companies, you know, in, in my area where they have they had a mandate for all employees to return and out of 80 that were supposed to return like 30 showed up and it was a problem they realized at that time they couldn't lose 50 employees at once because they didn't show up even though it was a mandate so what do you do with that how do you be flexible enough but still have the capability to lead by saying you can't just do whatever you want you still need to respect leadership but mm -hmm. also show that you care enough to have the availability to be flexible and adapt to their needs because if if you're not going to help or show that you care you're not going to maximize what you possibly can from your team mm -hmm. <laughs> so i would suggest that you know again leadership attend training by some gurus and i wish i was one of them since i'm talking about it <laughs> that can effectively coach and teach about human behaviors and then obviously if it's leadership in those classes they'll know how to create a program in-house you know to have a, a a communication channel and you know a reciprocation type of environment for their employees